Hello friend, today is day four of my 30 day no film school challenge where I will be learning a new filmmaking technique every day and then actually practicing what I have learnt. I will be documenting everything that I do and learn and sharing it all with you guys on this channel so if you want to follow my journey and learn along with me on a basic level then don't forget to click the subscribe button below. Day four is all about three-point lighting. As you might be able to tell, my lighting in my videos kind of sucks. I mentioned this before in a previous video that I just use natural window light, but right now in England, it is a very cloudy day. So I'm just about to watch some videos on YouTube about this, and then I will get back to you with what I've learned. All right, guys, so I've just finished watching those videos about three-point lighting. This is not the setup, but actually, I don't think it looks that bad, especially if I like moved over here, it kind of looks cool. Um, but for now I'm just sitting here because it's the only place that I can get sort of decent-ish light in my room because it is now night time. So there's no natural light from the windows because it's dark. It's dark. Um, and annoyingly, I do not have ceiling lights because they just randomly broke a few days ago and I've been waiting for my landlord to come and fix them because they're like LED specialist circle lights. I can't just change the light bulb myself. So the lights I'm gonna be using are these uh, bedside table lamps. I've got one here and then one there. I don't know if you can see that. And for my third light, I've got this uh, ring light. It was literally like one pound or something. Um, and it's got three different settings. So, well, it does get quite bright. And it was meant to have like a clip here, but in true Roxana Reed fashion, it broke, I broke it. Um, and the sticky thing I had has also stopped being sticky. So I don't know how I'm gonna hang it up somewhere, but I'll figure it out. And for my subject, I could of course use myself because, you know, hello. Um, but I've got this graduating <laughs> panda. So I actually teach English online and sometimes I teach kids and I have like a few props like this. So I'm not crazy, I promise. Um, yeah, so let me take you over to the studio. Right, so I've got my setup complete, kind of. I know it looks crap, but <laughs> that's because it probably is. Um, but do remember, I'm not actually the subject. The panda is the subject. So hopefully once we move a bit closer and I actually show you the photos, it will look better. I just wanted to quickly show you my setup because one, it was super stressful <laughs> to figure out, two, it looks completely ridiculous, and three, I'm really glad I was working with a stuffed animal and not a real person because the animal, the stuffed animal couldn't talk back to me when I was getting stressed. Okay, so I'll show you my setup. The key light is just over here, resting in an open chest of drawers because, you know, that's the only place I could um, really rest it, that where it balanced, and it's just hanging from um, <laughs> the socket all the way up on the ceiling. Okay, so that's the key light, and then the fill light is just over here which is another lamp that I actually wrangled up just now. Um, and that is a little like a softer light, I guess. And it's got the lampshade on it. I thought that was a good idea. Um, and then just behind me, you can see is the uh, hair light or the rim light or the back light. I forgot what it's called, something like that. I didn't actually use this small ring light in the end, but I was thinking it might be good to actually light up the background so then I guess it's four point lighting it would be like a background light I'm just guessing all right so this is how the subject looks um I know that this light here is yeah it's not correct um I think maybe in this case it would be better to use the small ring light so I'm just going to turn that off and see how it looks okay so I've just turned off this um rim light, backlight, hair light, whatever you want to call it, because it was just far too bright and far too big for this subject. And instead I'm going to use the mini ring light because it's just a better size for this subject. As I said, it's got these three different brightness settings, really bright, and I don't have anything to really hold it with, but just for the effect, if I was holding it up here, you can see that the light is on top of the hat which is like 
you know, essentially the hair. So that would be the hair light. And I could also pop it behind and then it kind of makes this like glow behind the bear. And also if I put it this way, it shines on the background and also creates some kind of glow. That would be more a, a back a background light I guess but it's a similar effect the main point is to separate the background from the subject so you can see if I just rest it like sort of up against him there um, you can see there's like the glow there so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now if I turn off my fill light you can see that there is more shadow on this side and if I turn off the uh, key light you will see that it's completely dark apart from the um, backlit bit so let's see what it looks like with just the fill light it's a lot dimmer um, this might be an effect you're going for if it's like more secretive or mysterious something like that but the three point lighten effect fully looks like this so I'm just going to take uh, 50 or Maybe it was a hundred photos I need to take and practice with these lights and also a different subject. Hey guys, so today is day four of the 30 day no film school challenge. I think I said yesterday that it was day four, but it was actually day three and now today is day four, but it's gonna be in the same video anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I am still doing three point lighting, only this time I'm meant to use a natural light source from a window and that is acting as my key light. As you can tell, it's quite bright. My hand is overexposed if I put it over there, but it's actually a really cloudy day. So I don't know if it's because of my camera, like the auto exposure or something. I have the exposure locked right now, but if I took that off, you can see like the different, if I tap around the screen, it exposes different parts of the screen. So yeah, we'll try and leave it there. Um, then over there, I have my fill light which is the same as this light I've just taken the light shade off and then this one behind me is my ring light or my backlight but actually if I turn this off probably the window back there can also act as the rim light but we'll leave it on for now for the sake of the exercise I just want to show you my key light because it's yeah it's my creation um this is my microphone stand and then all the way over here is my light that's just balanced on a chair on my bed so you know that's how I'm rolling filmmaking is about being creative and that's me to be honest now that I'm looking at this setup I think the camera should be more over here because the whole point is the key light is meant to be at a 45 degree angle between um, the camera and the subject and I think this is more like a 90 degree angle if my maths is correct which it usually is so let's try and move the camera slightly over there and reposition the lights and see what happens. All right, so I've just shifted everything over. This three point light and setup is honestly like an episode out of home improvements. I have to rearrange all my furniture every time. But already I think it looks a lot better. I feel like my face is more evenly lit. The key light is brighter than this side and this backlight rim light thingy, I don't know, where is it? Oh, um, <laughs> if it makes a difference. So let's just see without that yeah it does make quite a big difference actually so today's exercise is all about day one and two the frame and anchor position and the three-point lighting setup so I'm going to take some photos and position myself or my subject on one of the rule of thirds probably get rid of that crap in the background and just play around with framing and composition so just to kind of summarize for you what three-point lighting is we have the key light which is the main light it's meant to be out of 45 ish degrees angle and that's your brightest light source and then we have the fill light which just gets rid of some shadows on this side if i turn it off you can see now that the shadows there's a lot more shadows on my on this side of my face compared to oh, compared to if it's on the shadows are slightly less and then the rim light is just meant to make a difference between your subject and the background. If you liked this video and want to learn beginner filmmaking from a fellow beginner filmmaker instead of someone who uses crazy advanced vocabulary and you have no idea what they are talking about, then don't forget to click the subscribe button and also 
give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment, do whatever you want, share it, send it to your mum, do something. See you next time.